National tragedy in Las Vegas, claiming 58 lives and leaving hundreds injured. As a nation, it's as if we've grown desensitized to the horror of mass shootings. But the Las Vegas massacre seemed different. The deadliest mass shooting in American history. The shooter from his perch high up and far away, exposing the fact that nowhere is too far or too secure for a bullet's reach. For days, the festival grounds remain frozen in those moments of terror. As authorities work to calculate the totality of the disaster. It's hard to comprehend what happened, even to this day. The final toll, staggering. 58 dead, over 850 injured the deadliest mass shooting in modern American history. After the shooting, we went back, and then our next job was to clear the concert grounds and look for anybody who was still alive and hiding. And then after that was done, our, our job for the rest of the morning was actually standing over, <clears throat> standing over some people who were passed away over until the coroner could come and pick them up until about 8 in the morning. Later that morning, they head back to the hospital to check on Officer Brady Cook and that young woman they had carried in. I said, let's, let's go down to uh, trauma and see if we can get the name of the girl that we brought in. I thought for sure that she probably didn't make it. And then we talked to a nurse and I said, hey, you know, we brought this girl in last night. She was, oh yeah, I remember her. And they said she's up on like the third or fourth floor in the ICU. And I was stunned that she was still alive. We went up to uh, the neural ICU and saw her laying. And <clears throat> going to the hospital and learning that she's actually still alive was kind of like sunshine to a dark day. I saw it in their face that they were, they were hurt by this and they could, you know, and I kept telling them, you know, hey, be proud, you know, you, you guys got my wife here. For Frank and Giovanna Calzadias, their swift actions meant the difference between life and death. You know, there's nothing but love for those two guys. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I'm speechless. <laughs> I, I don't know what words to say to them that I'm grateful. They saved my life. In the days after the attack, the dark portrait of the man at the center of the massacre came into focus. The shooter, 64-year-old Stephen Paddock, a retired accountant and real estate investor, at one point a net worth of just over $2 million. But the scale and scope of what he did and how he did it remained a mystery. September 25th, 2017, security camera footage captures Paddock arriving at the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino six days before the attack. He's a high roller, a regular at the hotel. He was a very typical guest. He was, in our estimation, the lowest risk type of individual. No alarm bells going off. Paddock checks into a suite on the 32nd floor, and he's given the VIP treatment, allowed to bring his luggage up through a service elevator. He just looks like a middle-aged guy with a lot of luggage going up to a room. In the Mandalay Bay, a sprawling metropolis of restaurants, nightclubs, and over 100,000 square feet of gambling, he is only one man in a sea of thousands. Over the course of the next six days, under the ever-watchful eyes above, Paddock moves about the hotel, where he's known to gamble tens of thousands of dollars at a time. He can be seen playing the slots, making a purchase at the resort shop, and leisurely walking around. He preferred to play video poker machines. He would uh, stay at that for hours on end. And spend the nights here? Yes. Literally through the night? Over the course of his stay, he makes several trips to his house in Mesquite, Nevada, and brings in case after case after case of luggage. 21 suitcases in all, full of guns and ammunition. 
Four days into his stay, he checks into an adjoining room on the 32nd floor using the name of his girlfriend. Authorities say he'd already wired $150,000 to her in the Philippines. Finally, the investigation shows on October 1st, he orders room service and rigged those surveillance cameras before he brings in a final batch of suitcases and locks himself in his room. This will be the last known footage of Stephen Paddock alive.